Hey everybody, it's me, Mark Wiggins, the speaker man. Welcome to Off the Bench with your host, Mark Wiggins. Me, huh? Here we are today on our podcast, and got a lot of, got a topic I want to talk about today. And the topic has to do with creating opportunities. What helps us create opportunities to do the things we want to do in life, how we want to handle our business, the places we want to go, the things we want to see, the money we're trying to save, teams we're trying to make, whatever it is, what helps us create for the next opportunity? It's been said that opportunities never go away. They go to the person who's most prepared. And usually that person who's preparing is doing so and grinding in the background while you're sitting around doing nothing and then the opportunity shows itself and you wonder why you didn't get the opportunity, why you didn't get the win. It's because you were not prepared for the opportunity. When preparation meets success, it's because of opportunity. Nah, that was right. Let me reverse that. When, I prepar- when preparation and opportunity meet, success is born. There it is. When preparation and opportunity meet, success is born. Yeah, work with that. That's what we're talking about today. We're talking about how to take advantage of our opportunities to get ready to go. Um, let me share with you a story about opportunity. I do, and I'm entre- and I am an opportunity. Uh, <laughs> I am an entrepreneur. All right. I used to own my own cookie franchise back in the day. I, I don't own anything right now currently, but I still consider myself an entrepreneur type person, spirit, and whatever, and working on my own things like this podcast. So I'm continuing to work in that vein until opportunity presents itself, but I got to put the work in, right? You, I, People who have these great podcasts, they're doing a lot of good things, they've monetized them, they've got groups, they're speaking, they're training, all because they prepared to do this thing. I prepared to do podcasts. I spent about three, four months listening, analyzing, studying different types of podcasts, different personalities in podcasting, and to see what some of the back office things were that they were doing, what the offerings were, whether it were coaching, whether it was uh, sessions and one-offs and Facebook groups and all that, because you don't know when the opportunity comes. And as a former athlete, you're always told to prepare every single day like it's your day to start. You're one turned ankle away, you're one suspension away, you're one someone got sick away or someone died and had to go away. And I got a story about that, about being able to get ready to go play. Well, let me tell you that story first. Let me tell you the story about preparation and getting ready. So back when I was uh, growing up in Cleveland, Ohio, shouts out to all things Cleveland, war Cleveland. Um, I grew up in the suburbs of Maple Heights and there was this place called the the hill, the park. We go play at the park, and we had a blacktop there. We played basketball. So everybody would go out there and do their thing, and we tripled and played around, have a good time, and and we grew up. And there was always a core of people who came through together that played on the high school teams. Uh, I made the middle school the middle school team, which back then was still elementary, and then junior high, which we now know to be middle school. I was on the junior high team with my boys from the hood. We all elevated up into the freshman year, very anticipated class, right? And coming up through, um, we were pretty good. I wasn't the best player. I was still kind of awkward with it. And I grew over the summer like six inches. I grew from 5'9", five, 5'10", five, somewhere to 6'2", somewhere in there. Do the math. Came into the gym, everybody was looking up at me like, oh, wow, okay, all right. But I was skinny as his microphone cord, <laughs> and I couldn't walk and chew gum at the same time. Nonetheless, our freshman then, JV team, I was called the JV team. Our JV team was beasting. We were undefeated, we were playing hard, and we were ready to go. Our varsity team was doing okay, but they were struggling. Christmas time came, and the tournament came. Coach pulls me into the locker room and says, Wiggs, everybody called me Wiggs back in the day. We're going to move you up to varsity for the tournament. Just to give you some exposure, some training, we're going to bring you up to varsity. You're going to set the end of the pine. You may or may not get in, but we want you on the bench for the exposure. Cool, coach. I'm with it. Go to the tournament. Game one. I'm on the bench clapping. Ooh, wee, there we go. This is scary. This is scary. I've never been in. Second game comes. We're playing our arch rival, Mentor. And there's a guy in front of me named Dennis. Dennis Flanoy was one of the people in the neighborhood who could ball out or whatever. But Dennis had a little, he had some problems with, uh, Dennis like to get high. Let me be clear. I didn't know what it was. He was high. Oh, my God. What is that? You know, he's a weed head from way back. And so, but Dennis got in foul trouble in the game. One, two, three, four. So Dennis got in trouble. So 
at halftime, walk into the locker room, and the coach goes, you better get ready. What? what? <laughs> ready for what? Coach, you told me to sit on the end of the bench, and that's exactly where I'm sitting, on the end of the bench. Well, come the second half, Dennis now has picked up his fifth foul. He's fouled out. Everybody's looking down the bench, looking at me. I'm like, oh, let's go, let's go. Ain't nobody next to me. I'm it. Coach is like, come on, Wiggs, let's go. I'm like, uh, uh, uh. Just breathe, relax, get in there, just get rebounds. Don't worry about anything else. Rebounds and defense. What you do best, do those things. <laughs> so I get in the game, and I'm playing, I'm running around, and it's like, you've seen The Matrix, the movie The Matrix, and you see the, you know, the, uh, uh, when Neo was dodging bullets, like, <laughs> and he's fighting, no, he's fighting, he's fighting um, my main man, uh, uh, Morpheus. Him and Morpheus were fighting, and they watch it real time. That's what the game looked like. It didn't slow down for a long, long, long time. So I'm rubbing down, rubbing, just doing what I do. Spot to spot to spot. I'm over. I'm amped. I'm amped. Finally, I break a sweat. Finally, I get to play. Finally, I grab a rebound and don't lose it out of bounds and, and, and get it to the guard. and like, here, take this ball. And I ran down the other way. Well, from that moment, the second half of my sophomore year from the JV, second half of that, that game, I started the next game. I started from every game forward the rest of my high school career. See, if I had not been preparing that whole time to get ready to go play, the opportunity would have presented itself and I would not have been ready. I would not have been ready. So it's about opportunity and being prepared and getting ready to go for when it shows up. Now, back to my entrepreneur story. Um, I go to a lot of different trade shows. I go to uh, shows in Vegas, in Atlanta, Orlando. Uh, wherever else I can find one that, I, that my company will pay for, and I'm gone. And I, there was this session I went to, and this thing called Seeds of Happiness. You gotta look it up online. This is really, really simple. Seeds of Happiness. They're brightly colored lumps of clay that have a really kind of funny face on it and puts a smile on it. And they're painted orange, green, pink, whatever, and they got a little card. It's called this the Seeds of Happiness. We have sold so many of those little things out of our stores, like a little grab at the counter, right, on the way out the door. Just grabbing them and selling them. And I actually was in a room and met the wife of the creator of Seeds of Happiness. I was like, oh, yeah, that's our business. My husband created it. I said, would you please tell me the story? Now, the story is on the back of the card, but I wanted the story behind the story on the back of the card. And she says, well... My husband likes to work with, with clay, and he makes stuff, and one day he had some leftover clay. It fell on the floor, and he didn't want to do with it. So he just took it, made a face of it, fired it up, painted it, and made a bunch of them. And so people thought those were cute. He started giving them away to make people smile. He would go to the hospital and, and give them to people in the hospital, and they would smile behind these somewhat funny-looking faces. Seeds of Happiness was born out of an opportunity that someone made something and did something with something that was left over, literally, to give to someone so they wouldn't waste it. And now the dude's business is all, is all over the place. He's delivering stuff everywhere. There's countless of stories like this. You may have a story like this. I want to hear your story. If you've got a story like this, hit me on Extreme Effort Radio uh, at gmail.com and share with your story. Share me your story about the time you took the time that you were able to take advantage of an opportunity presented to you, right? When did you be, when were you able to do that? That's what I want to know. How were you able to take advantage of an opportunity that presented itself because you were prepared? A lot of fun facts I told you about being prepared in opportunities. They don't go away. They go to the person who's most prepared. And if that person is not prepared, it's going to go to another person. You just make sure you're ready to go. So let's talk about getting prepared. Super Bowl is getting ready to happen at this point, and everyone's talking about Tom Brady. Like him or hate him, or hate him and hate him, Tom Brady is a beast. He's a beast. He's proven himself to be the sustained juggernaut and the Patriots out of the East that just continue to win. Everybody hates a winner. Nobody loves a loser. No, everybody hates a winner, especially when you're consistent. Do you understand the preparation it takes to sustain the level of greatness that Tom Brady has sustained himself? Now, as an athlete, 
I appreciate his work. I appreciate the fact that he has done so much. Most people don't appreciate that. They don't get it. They just mad and hate whatever. But him, uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers, people, other great court, LeBron James, Steph Curry, uh, Harden, the list goes on and on about all the people who have sustained greatness and taken advantage of opportunities. Then that's what you got to do. You got to be pre prepared for your opportunity. And again, knowing what it is you want to do. So I'm going to give you, moving into our, our, our conversation, I'm going to give you 4.5 things I believe will help you take advantage of opportunities and as you create them, as they're presented to yourself and, and working for those opportunities before they actually show up. <clears throat> the first thing I want you to do, and you can take this note, write this down. The first thing is prepare as if you're up next. Prepare as if you're up next. When we are next, there's all this anxious getting ready to go. You could be standing in line at McDonald's and be ready to go next to place your order. You done seen the menu 4,062 times. But for some reason, you get ready to go. I don't know what I'm going to order. I, I'm going to commit to the double cheeseburger today. I'm going to get the fried chicken sandwich. No, no. You know what? That's a good deal. I don't, I don't know. Sir, can I help you? Uh, just a moment. No, you're not ready. You should have ready to go. You should have been more than ready to go because you had a whole four minutes to figure it out when you walked in. Prepare your, your, uh, as you're next in line. And when you do so, you'll be surprised that when you're ready to take over, an opportunity comes, you'll be ready to take over. Right? When you're waiting to take over and preparing, then when it shows up, you'll be ready to take over. So that's what we're going to do is continue to work and prepare as you're next up. There's a concept called moving without the ball. And again, I do a lot of basketball talking and whatnot. And moving without the ball simply says that I'm going to work and work and move and do effort until I get the moment that the ball happens to land in my hand. And when it lands in my hand, there are only three things positively that I can do. I can dribble, I can pass, or I can shoot. Now I said positively because I can turn the ball over, I can fumble it, it can get stolen. There are a lot of negative things, but there's only three positive things that can happen when the ball is in your hand. Shockingly enough, there's a statistics out there by our, on stats on NBA.com that actually talk about the amount of time players have the ball in their possession. In a 48-minute game, you'd be stunned to know that most players don't have the ball in their hand more than a few minutes. A few minutes. You're scoring 35, 45, 55 points. It doesn't take but a second to get a shot off circa uh, Steph Curry. So imagine you're catching the ball and shooting less than two seconds and you're scoring three at a time. So you don't have a lot of time to do anything with the ball. Matter of fact, by rule, if I catch the ball and hold it, I have five seconds to stand still without dribbling, passing, or shooting. Only five. I've got 20 in, bat in the NBA, uh, 24 seconds on the shot clock, uh, and, and college is 40-something in the shot clock to do something with. So you can't hold the ball for a minute. Right? So you can see how quick things are, but when they get the ball, you have to decide on what you're going to do. You can't just sit back and wait once you get the ball in your hand. The second thing I want you to do as we prepare for our opportunities is to get coaching. Find someone to help you get to your next level. People can only coach you up to where they are. And hopefully you grab somebody who's above you that they can take you a little bit higher. And then you have to get somebody who's above that person. Every coach probably has and should have a coach. I coach and I have a coach. My sister is a psychologist, PhD, doctorate psychologist, and she has a psychologist. Doctors have psychologists. Everybody has a coach or professional person to go to and help them relieve some stuff off their mind, help them formulate some thoughts. So don't think it's beneath you or strange that you have to have a coach. Get coaching. Pay for it. Eric Thomas, I went to see his conference um, here in D.C. area not so long ago, said something very profound. He said, if you want to get to the next level, you're going to have to pay for it. That resonated with me. That resonated with me. I said, yeah, am, I, am I paying enough? What, somebody's not doing their job. Well, probably because I'm not paying for the job. Right? So, that, so you got to be willing to pay for the things that you want. Number three, surround yourself with like-minded people. Surround yourself with like-minded people. How difficult is it to do things and be achieving things in the world of re real estate? Let's say real estate. You're in the world of real estate. You want to be a realtor or flip houses or whatever, but you hang around people who sell cars. Base concept is the same, customer service, 
retail, whatever, but they're not fully grasping the complexity of a house deal. Just like you will not grasp the complexity of a car deal. Or you're hanging around people who want to be entrepreneurs. You're an entrepreneur and you're hanging around people who enjoy working for someone else. Like sitting on people's clocks. It, it, it blows your mind that they're good with this. But that's why you need to surround yourself with like-minded people. Therefore, trade associations, um, professional associations, networking groups, small groups, you know, like at the church, get in a group that are people who are just like-minded like you. It helps you do a lot of work. That's the kind of groups you want to get into to help you find like-minded people. Number four, network effectively. Learn how to network effectively and find opportunities in the network situation. Remember, networking is not about what you can, what people can do for you. Really, it's about how you can help someone else. What connection can I make for you inside of my network of people that I know to help you get where you want to go? Zig Ziglar said it best. If you help enough people get what they want, then you will get what you want. Help people. It's real simple. The rule of reciprocity. Give and it should be given back to you. You can't beat it. So why not give it a try? Help someone else. It may not be your industry. It may not be anything but a connect. Here's somebody's card. Tell them I sent you. And you know what? Business is business. I've done it all the time. I do this. They do that. I'm going to put you together, and I'm stepping out. If, you do, if it makes it work, cool. If it doesn't work, cool. Not my problem. But I at least gave you an opportunity, present it, for you to take advantage of. But the rest is up to you. And the point five on this, the 4.5 on this, is to be CIC, as I call it, sick. Be conscious, intentional, and consistent. As conscious intentional and consistent you want to be aware of your surroundings and where what's going on with you and where you're trying to go and your goals reviewing those every day you want to be intentional making sure that everything you do means something is going to take you somewhere stop wasting time on things that won't take you places a lot of great opportunities out there a lot of b2b networking group and marketing groups that just aren't for you stop wasting your time if it's not for you stay away from it I'm not saying it's bad it's just not for you be intentional about how you choose to spend your time and who you spend your time with. And lastly, be consistent. Follow through, follow up, all those things that people talk about in any networking situation, you usually hear the one area that everybody can improve on is the follow through. The follow through. Making sure that you follow up and do what you said you're going to do is crucial. So those are the 4.5 things I believe will help you take advantage of opportunities. One, prepare as, you're, as if you're next up. Two, get coaching. Three, surround yourself with like-minded people. Four, network effectively. Point five, become sick. C-I-C, conscious, intentional, and consistent. All right, so that's it with, for our podcast today. Thank you for joining Off the Bench with Mark Wiggins. This is definitely a great show, uh, a chance for me to talk about some topics. I will have guests on as well. Make sure you like me on Facebook at speakerman 87 Twitter, Speakerman87, Instagram, Speakerman87, like and share as well. Go to my website, booksbymarkwiggins.com. You can order books and definitely follow me on SoundCloud. Look for Off the Bench with Mark Wiggins. Log in there. Follow me on the RSS feed so you don't miss any updates. All right. Thank you for joining in. And remember, if you can reach your dreams with a stepladder, then they're probably too low. Take care, everyone. I'm out.